from Kenya, which is below Israel, is the king of the south. And that before elections in 2016, Russia will invade America, so there will be no 2016 USA elections. And as outlandish as that seems, you bet he will get followers, not only from his kindred in Sardis, but from you know where. So we have to be sure that we are grounded in the truth. Closer to home, uh, the Anglican Bishop of Barbados announced that the call by the government for churches to pray for, for the issue of violence and crime, that the government should understand that praying does not work magic and that just by praying will not solve the issue of crime and violence. We must get to the root. Now, the government official asked for church members to go into homes and so on and so forth. These are the same people that when you knock at their homes, don't open the door. And you have people at church, young people at church, and you tell them it's away, and they don't even hear. Furthermore, going into homes to tell them anything. So you have all these issues and problems, and you can see, therefore, you can see, therefore, that the time will come when Satan's intention will be carried out. That is, the world, the young people, the vagabonds, the hooligans, everybody have too much freedom. Take it away and enforce, inverted commas, righteousness. And therefore, it is for us to understand that these are solemn times. For our young people to understand that coming to church and drifting around a circle will not prepare them when the crisis breaks. And that, and that they must make a decision, wherever they are, wherever they are, ultimately for or against Jesus Christ. Solemn indeed are the times to which we have come. And as church members, we should be seeking that revival and reformation. You heard an announcement just now inviting us uh, in greater numbers back on Sunday night church churches for prayer and sharing and so on. And we are told that every Every convocation of the church, camp meetings, every meeting is an opportunity to come and pray and study and learn because the crisis will come. And I've said already in this church that the time will come when the same people who don't pay any attention or come will come knocking at the church to asking for truth when it will be too late to understand truth half having wasted years when they could have come and learned. May that not be our ultimate end point. Solemn times indeed. And may God, as we help us as we go through this ladder, we have a lot to do and exciting times of truth ahead of us that we should learn and submit. Today we are at chapter six, which is uh, fifth, part two. We did part one two weeks ago, and I hope that that message got through. Today is fifth, part two. After this, we come to fifth, part three. Then virtue, we have two lectures on two messages on virtue, and then we get into a, a very deep area, the knowledge of God. We have about three or four in that as we flow up. Peter's ladder, climbing it in Jesus Christ. At this time, we shall pray, then have an item of special music, and begin our study. Gracious Heavenly Father, solemn indeed are the times to which we have come and these are only the beginning of sorrows. Europe on edge, increasingly so. And the free Western world under attack from religious extremists who know only force as their message. And eventually, we know Satan's ploy is to persuade the Western nations of Christendom, that the experiment of freedom would have failed, and they too need to employ a kind of force to put things right. And we know that that will end up in the mark of the beast New World Economic Order, which is ahead, and which will see sweeping changes to our accustomed way of life. May we understand the issues, and moment by moment, day by day, seek to make our calling and election sure rather than playing church or skylarking with truth. Have mercy upon us as we continue now with faith, 
Part two, in climbing Peter's ladder, teach us and maybe not only understand, but experience through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Fifth, the foundation of the ladder, chap, uh, part two. This is chapter six in our series so far. And just to recap, the faith of Jesus, the faith of Jesus is the foundation of Peter's ladder. We believe in Jesus in order to be justified by the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus has bought back all that the first Adam sold out, praise the Lord. Galatians 2.16 tells us, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law, 
shall no flesh be justified. An important text that is usually misunderstood. This text is telling us that we must understand the true function of the law. The law points out sin, shows us that we are sinners, and brings us to Christ to be forgiven and justified and cleansed and to be born again. And when that is done, our lives are transformed to be in obedience to the very principles of the law, not by works of law, but by the faith of Jesus, righteousness put to our account, and righteousness imparted, the law, in fact, no longer written merely on stone, but in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And Galatians 3.26 says that, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, Romans 5, 1 to 2, we can read this together. Let's go, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Important point now. This important quotations from Christ's object lessons. All men have been bought with this infinite price. Now this is an important truth. Because if Jesus did not buy all men when he died on the cross, every time somebody comes to him to be saved, he would have to die again. So all men have been bought. That is what we mean by legal redemption. The price has been paid. And it seems so difficult for some people to understand. If the price has been paid for something, that thing has been bought. Now, whether we give ourselves to him or not is our choice. If we don't give ourselves to him, we cannot be saved unto eternal life. But we have been bought. We belong to him. Listen to the spirit of prophecy. All men have been bought with this infinite price. By pouring the whole treasury of heaven into this world, by giving us in Christ all heaven. Notice what God has given us. All heaven in Christ. God has purchased the will, the affections, the mind, the soul of every human being. God has purchased it. Whether believers or unbelievers, all men are the Lord's property because he's paid the price for them. Continuing the quote. All are called to do service for him. And for the manner in which they have met this claim, all will be required to render an account at the great judgment day. Christ object lessons 326. The price has been paid. That's the good news. When we believe it and give ourselves to him who paid the price for us, that is our choice and our part, then we receive experientially the free gift of salvation, which is unto eternal life. If we don't believe and give ourselves to him, we will not end up with eternal life. But the point is, he has paid the redemption price for the entire human race. Praise the Lord. Faith surrenders. So we come now to understanding the issues. It was possible for Adam, before the fall, to form a righteous character by obedience to God's law. Why? Adam had righteousness in him, and he was a perfect and righteous being in his brain structure and in his nature, and he was innocent. That is, he had not, at that point in time, sinned. Next sentence. But he failed to do this. And because of his sin, our natures are fallen, and we cannot make ourselves righteous. Is that clear? We can't make ourselves righteous. That's what the world is trying to do right now. All the committees, all the counseling, all the politics, all the big councils in Europe trying to make the world righteous. And we can't do it. All the politicians want the church. The church now been preaching Christ for centuries. Church been preaching Christ for centuries. Even the fallen church has been preaching at least a basic gospel. But this modern world has all the universities all the universities teach there is no God. We came here by evolution. And as things get worse and worse, now the call is the church ain't doing anything. But the Apostle Paul says all that God wants the church to do is to do what the Bible calls the foolishness of preaching. Preach the word. 
because we cannot force anybody to accept Jesus Christ or do right because God has made all of his creatures free. And not even God will force man to do right. Man must choose to believe and submit. So when the politicians start asking the church to do something, all the church can do is continue to preach and teach the gospel. But you know, the politicians will eventually say, and listen carefully, even the church, the fallen churches will eventually say that that ain't working. So church and state will come together and form a new world economic order in which righteousness by force. There's a new righteousness now. We had righteousness by faith, which is true. We had righteousness by law, which is false. No, a new falsehood. Righteousness by force will be the new way of righteousness in the new world economic order. So because Adam, because of Adam's sin, our natures are fallen, and we cannot make ourselves righteous. Since we are sinful and unholy, we cannot perfectly obey the holy law. We have no righteousness of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. But hallelujah, but hallelujah. Next sentence, let's read it together. Christ has made a way of escape for us. He lived on earth and made trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived, hallelujah, a sinless life, and we can add, in our sinful nature. He died for us, and now he offers to take our sins and give us his righteousness. Praise the Lord. If you give yourself to him, now this is the important point. He has paid the price for us. He has died for our sins. That is why he can take them from us, because he died for them. If he did not die for our sins, God could not take away sins from us that Jesus had not died for. So now comes our choice and our part. If you, if I, whoever it is, if you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, look at this glorious transaction, focus and follow. Then, sinful as your life may have been, for his sake, you are accounted righteous. Christ's character stands in place of your character, and you are accepted before God just as if you had not sinned. Praise the Lord. The Pharisees could never believe this. They were the Pharisees trying very hard, very hard to obey law, to get right with God when they did not love God. And when Jesus came and told the publicans and Pharisees, believe on me. And when the Apostle Paul went preaching to the Galatians, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you pagans, and you'll be saved. The Jews said, can't be so easy. Can't be so easy. But it's as easy as that. When we believe with genuine faith, and genuine faith believes the word of God, trusts God, and surrenders to God. Then look at the first transaction. In this exchange, look at it. Christ's character stands in place of your character, and you are accepted before God just as if you had not sinned. Oh, praise the Lord. You heard that? Look at the next part of the transaction. It is fantastic. More than this, praise the Lord. Let's read it. Christ changes the heart. And that is what the... The people that's causing all the terror and the murders and rapes and stealing need. They need a change of heart. And who only can do it? Christ, not politics. Only Christ can change the heart. And he can only change the heart if the individual chooses to believe and submit. Christ changes the heart. Look at this beautiful relationship now. He abides in your heart by faith. You are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith and the continual surrender of your will to him. But people surrendering their wills to marijuana, to alcohol, to cocaine, to drug lords, to guns, to violence. That is what they're surrendering their wills to, to pornography, to illicit sex, to all sorts of things. But we are to surrender our wills 
to Christ. I look at this beautiful sentence now. And so long as you do this, he will work in you to do what? To will and to do according to his good pleasure. So you may say, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, praise the Lord. Galatians 2.20. So Jesus said to his disciples, it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Matthew 20.20. 20. And let's read this sentence together. Let's go. Then, with Christ working in you, you will manifest the same spirit and do the same good works, works of righteousness and obedience. And that was our devotional message this morning. Christ's delight in the soul. Praise the Lord. You see what is done? So we've just gone through, in a few minutes, in a nutshell, the true everlasting gospel. What Christ has done for all men, and then what we must do in terms of faith and submission to receive what he has done and to be transformed and made obedient to his will. The true everlasting gospel. And this is all the church can do. Preach it. And as we heard this morning, more importantly, live it by abiding in Christ. And when the church has preached it and lived it, the church can do no more. And watch it. If the state continues courting the church to do more, the fallen churches will eventually give in to the deception and want to do something else, which is outside of the gospel, which is passing laws, religious laws by the state, to make the world better. And that's Satan's big temptation. Everybody following so far? And now, to conclude this quotation, all of this is from Steps to Christ, page 62. So we have nothing in ourselves of which to boast. We have no ground for self-exaltation. Our only ground of hope is in the righteousness of Christ imputed to us and, hallelujah, in that wrought by his spirit working in and through us. Oh, praise the Lord. So if you haven't heard the gospel for a long time, you just heard it in a few minutes in condensation, but clear. The everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Genuine faith. We are in Peter's ladder. And this is faith part two. Genuine faith. Last time we defined faith. And I hope you remember the definition. But we're looking at our genuine faith. Follow carefully. When we speak of faith. There is a distinction that should be born in mind. There is a kind of belief that is wholly distinct from faith. The existence and power of God, the truth of his word, are facts that even Satan and his hosts cannot at heart deny. I told you last time that the evolutionists now are in real trouble. Because Rosetta, the spacecraft, just discovered oxygen inside stones in a meteor. If there was a big bang that caused an explosion, there can be no oxygen left on those things. And the scientists admitted it. Therefore, this is what they said. We have to admit that the universe must be much, much younger than we originally thought. All our big words and citizens, we were wrong, and there had to be a God. So these facts, they will be forced to admit. The Bible says that the devils also believe and tremble. But this is not faith. You heard that? But it's a serious thing, you know. Believing and trembling is not faith. When Paul finished talking before Agrippa, Agrippa was trembling and said, Almost thou hast persuaded me, but come back another time. So you can hear the word of God. You can hear the word of God and tremble. You can hear the word of God and even cry. But if you don't surrender your heart, the crying or the trembling cannot save you. It is the surrendering that receives the free gift of salvation and the transformation. So continuing on now, faith. Listen to what faith is. Where there is not only a belief in God's word, there must be a belief in his word, but not only that, but a submission of the will to him. Where the heart is yielded to him. The affections fixed upon him. You hear that? 
if you don't love God, you can't trust him. You talk faith and so on, but you, you, you can't love when you don't trust. You can't trust when you don't love. The affections fixed upon him. Watch it now. There is faith. Faith, hallelujah, that works by love and purifies the soul. Through this faith, the heart is renewed in the image of God. Everybody got that? Where there is not only a belief in God's word. A lot of people may come here because they believe that what we preach is truth. And last time we talked about faith being a body of belief. But it is not only that. It is the body of belief and a submission of the will to God in that truth. Where the heart is yielded to him. The affections fixed upon him. There is faith. Faith that works by love and purifies the soul. Through this faith, the heart is renewed in the image of God. And this is beautiful now. And the heart that in its unrenewed state is not subject to the law of God. You hear that? So look, all the programs you put in place and the hearts of people are not renewed. The government has this plan. The counselors have another plan. The psychologists have a third plan. And the heart is not renewed. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. But when it is renewed, listen to it, it now delights in its holy precepts, exclaiming with the psalmist, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Psalm 119, 97. And the righteousness, this is Romans 8, 1, and the righteousness, Romans 8, 1 to 4, the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Romans 8, 1 to 4. All of that steps to Christ, page 63. So now, this is the point. You can only climb Peter's ladder if you are born again and abiding in Christ. So don't make Peter's ladder climbing another piece of legalism. You can only climb it if you're born again and abiding in Christ. Otherwise, you're just looking at the ladder. Okay? Listen to Jesus, John 15, 4 to 5. Abide. Let's read this together. Let's read the words of Jesus together, John 15, 4 to 5. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. John 15, 4 and 5. Important points now. The faith of the baby in Christ must grow or else it will die. You heard that? The faith of the baby in Christ must grow or else it will die. It is of the utmost importance to keep the faith of Jesus and allow it to grow. And faith grows by what? Exercise. We mentioned that last time. Faith grows by exercise. Faith grows by studying the word. Of God. Keeping the faith. Keeping the faith. The Bible tells us that Paul kept the faith. Let's read this text. 2 Peter 4 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And God's end time remnant will keep the faith. The conditions in this world will become such that everybody in the world will give up genuine faith in God and adopt the principles of the new world economic order. But God's end time remnant will keep the faith. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And we can put because instead of and because they keep the faith of Jesus. Building up yourself on your faith. In Jude verse 20 and verse 21, this is what Jude says. Let's read it together, everybody. But ye, beloved, 
building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You see our responsibility? Keep ourselves in the love of God. In other words, constantly see that love. Think of that love. Meditate of that love by looking at the cross where Jesus died and reveal that love. And as you do that, you'll be building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Now, pay careful attention. Faith is built up or grown by three closely interrelated activities. Let's list them together. Number one is by poor. Number two is by studying the word of God and rightly dividing that word. And three, by exercise. Prayer, studying the word of God and rightly dividing that word, and by exercise. Listen to this amazing quotation. At nine o'clock, I attended a meeting of the students in the school chapel. About 80 were present, and the room was full. An hour was occupied in reading and in talking to them about the necessity of their understanding how to exercise faith. How much time? An hour. Okay. And in talking to them about the necessity of doing what? Of their understanding how to exercise faith. Listen now. This is the science of the gospel. The scripture declares without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now underline this. The knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. Well, well, well. In other words, how to exercise faith as a science more important and more deep than all the textbooks written on all the other sciences. The knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. You see, most of the knowledge in the universities actually teach people how not to exercise faith, how to doubt God. That's why the world is in a mess. But the knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. All of this is Review and Herald, October 18, 1898. Let's continue now. Watch this. We suffer much trouble. You know, when we suffer trouble, we blame everything and everybody else. We suffer much trouble and grief because of what? I suffer much trouble and grief because of you? No, because of my unbelief. We suffer much trouble and grief because of our unbelief and our, our ignorance of how to exercise faith. We must break through the clouds of unbelief. We cannot have a healthy Christian experience. Watch this. We cannot have a healthy Christian experience. We cannot obey the gospel unto salvation unless the science of faith is better understood and until more faith is exercised. There can be no perfection of Christian character without faith that works by love and purifies the soul. I'm going to leave that up for a minute. Look at it and read it to your own mind again. We suffer much trouble and grief because of our unbelief and our ignorance of how to exercise faith. We must break through the clouds of unbelief. We cannot have a healthy Christian experience. We cannot obey the gospel unto salvation until the science of faith is better understood and until more faith is exercised. There can be no perfection of Christian character 
without that faith that works by love and purifies the soul. We are on Herald, October 18, 1898. Faith and power. Keep following. Keep your eyelids open. Keep following. Faith is exercised through power. The question is how? Listen to A.T. Jones. Anyone who seeks in the word of God the things, promises, which God has there provided for all, and upon that specific word or promise, prays for that thing, thus asking according to the plainly expressed will of God, knows that his prayer is heard and that he has the thing for which he prayed. A.T. Jones, Review and Herald, February 28, 1899. Oh, praise the Lord. Listen to the, that's exactly what the Bible says. Listen to John 15, 7. If ye abide in me, Jesus says, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you, because what you will is what God's will. And look at 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence. This is the what? This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. That is living faith. That's the faith we have to reach in order to perfect character. Praise the Lord. This is the confidence. That when we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know we have the thing. And Hebrews 11 says, but without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that come after God must believe that God is. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, praise the Lord. You have to have faith, you know. People who believe in a big bang have faith in an explosion. I prefer to have faith in God. Okay? But you have to have faith. They, they don't know how it started, so they believe in a big bang. I believe in God. I don't know which you prefer to believe in an explosion. You see explosions killing people all around the world. Somebody asked the other day, has an explosion ever done anything good? No. Big bang rubbish. I believe in God. He that come after God must believe. Praise the Lord that he is. And there's enough evidence, as we have seen and as we shall see. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. And Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The words of Jesus. Mark eleven twenty four. So this is the kind of faith we have to develop by prayer and study and claiming the promises. And I know what God says. Prove me. Prove me. Okay. Divine science. You're complete in him. Colossians 2.10. Praise the Lord. We are complete in Christ. This quotation is of extreme importance. Follow it carefully. Prayer and faith are closely allied and they need to be studied together. In the prayer of faith, there is a divine science. A what? A divine science. It is a science that everyone who would make his life work a success must understand. Christ says what? things wherever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye have them, and ye shall have them. So there's deep science here, you know. And ye shall have them. This is a deep science here. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. We continue. He makes it plain that our asking must be according to, his, to God's will. We must ask for the things that he has promised. And whatever we receive must be used in doing his will. You hear those two conditions? Ask for what God has promised. And whatever you want, you must do it. Use it what? In doing God's will. Advancing his cause. Listen now. The conditions met. The promise 
is unequivocal. Praise the Lord. The conditions met, the promise cannot fail. If we want the thing for selfish reasons, well, don't blame God when it can't happen because that is not in the circuit of beneficence. Praise the Lord. Listen now, continuing. Follow carefully. For the pardon of sin, for the Holy Spirit, for a Christ-like temper, for wisdom and strength to do his work, for any gift he has promised we may ask, then we are to believe that we receive and return thanks to God that we have received. We need look for no outward evidence of the blessing. This is where we fall down. This is where we fall down. We need look for no outward evidence of the blessing. The gift is in the promise. And we may go about our work assured that what God has promised, he is able to perform. And that the gift which we already possess will be realized when we need it most. Oh, praise the Lord. The gift which we already possess will be realized when we need it most. That's the kind of faith I need. That's the kind of faith we need. It's the faith of Jesus. Praise the Lord. To live thus by the word of God means the surrender to him of the whole life. There will be felt a continual sense of need and dependence, a drawing out of the heart after God. Prayer is a necessity, for it is the life of the soul. Family prayer, public prayer have their place, but it is secret communion with God that sustains the soul life. How is your prayer life? How is my prayer life? Are we agonizing with God in secret? Praying and agonizing. Do we talk to God throughout the day? Even on Sabbath, people get together and talk all sorts of rubbish about cars and all sorts of rubbish and don't even talk to God. So if they do that on the Sabbath, you know, they ain't talking to God during the week at all, talking to a car. It's serious business. Talking to God. Prayer is a necessity for it is the life of the soul. Family prayer, public prayer have their place, but it is secret communion with God that sustains the soul life. It was in the mount with God that Moses beheld the pattern of that wonderful building which was to be the abiding place of his glory. It is in the mount with God, in the secret place of communion, that we are to contemplate his glorious ideal for humanity. Praise the Lord. Thus we shall be enabled so to fashion our character building that to us may be fulfilled his promise. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Second Corinthians 6, 16, education 257, 258. This is very important. A couple of weeks ago, a retired criminal was talking to me. He told me that his life was, a, that was his career, a criminal career, but he's retired. And he says, Dr. Doug, let me tell you something. There are things called demons. He says, the demon of criminality, the demon had me licked up. He said, people would talk and counsel, but until I gave my heart to God, there was no release. You see, when, the, when different things dwell in us and walk about in us, we're in trouble. Who must dwell in us and walk about in us? God, the God says he wants to dwell in you and walk about in you. Walk all through your mind and clean it up with the light. I will dwell in them and walk in them. Oh, praise the Lord. But sometimes patients come and tell me things are walking all through their belly. Make sure the Lord walking both in your ear. Make sure that's the Lord walking both in you. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And they shall be my people. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Oh, praise the Lord. And Jesus is our example. It was in hours of solitary prayer that Jesus in his earthly life received wisdom and power. Young people, this is for you. This is for all of us. Let the youth follow his example in finding at dawn and twilight, a quiet season for communion with their father in heaven. And throughout the day, let them and let us lift up their hearts to God. 
at every step of our way, he says, I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Fear not, I will help thee. Isaiah 41, 13. Could our children learn these lessons in the morning of their years? What freshness and power, what joy and sweetness would be brought into their lives? Education 259. All right, we come now to formulating the science. Since understanding how to exercise faith is the science of the gospel, and since we cannot have a healthy Christian experience until the science of the gospel is better understood, we should formulate the science. The formula for exercising faith through prayer is as simple as A, B, C, D. And yet as powerful as the power of God in his word. A, B, C, D. Ask, A. Believe, B. Claim the promise, C. And do. When we ask, believe, and claim, listen, then we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. A, B, C, D. Ask, believe, claim, and do. Philippians 4.13. The formula then, the formula of the science of the gospel has two basic principles. Exercise faith through prayer and think and act in harmony with the word of God. You heard that? Exercise faith through prayer and think and act in harmony with what? Not the word of man, the word of God. The word of God. Ask. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Let's read it together. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Hallelujah. The words of Jesus. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Believe. Let's read it. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. We read it already. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That is believe. And claim. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. 1 John 5, 14. Praise the Lord. Claim now. 1 John 5, 15. Let's read it. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we deserve. Praise the Lord. Ask, believe, claim. Do. Do give thanks and rejoice in. And do act upon the promise and the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Praise the Lord. Rejoice, give thanks, and act upon the word. Praise the Lord. Because we can do all things through Christ who, prom who, who, strengthens, who strengthens us. This is a beautiful, beautiful one from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Today's English version, New English Bible. Let's read it together. Don't worry about anything. Let's start again because all of us are prone to worry. Let's go. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, New English Bible, hallelujah. Now always remember that faith works. Faith does what? Now faith is not just a noun, you know. Faith obeys. Faith is an action noun. It is not passive. It works by love to produce obedience to God's word. Faith always obeys. Praise the Lord. 
And just before we put the formula together in closing, let's look at the power of prayer briefly. The power of prayer. This is Testimonies, Volume 1, 296. The prayer of faith is the great strength of the Christian and will assuredly prevail against Satan. That is why Satan insinuates that we have no need of prayer. You hear that trick? Satan tells you don't need to pray because Satan knows that if you pray, if you pray, he's in trouble. The prayer of faith is the great strength of the Christian and will assuredly prevail against Satan. This is why Satan insinuates that we have no need of prayer. The name of Jesus, our advocate, he detests. And when we earnestly come to Jesus for help, Satan's host is alarmed. It serves Satan's purpose well if we neglect the exercise of prayer. For then his lion wonders are more readily received. 1 T 296. Prayer. We, we, we should read this together. Coming on to the end. Prayer is the breath of the soul. It is the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life and strengthens the sinew and muscle of the religious experience. Praise the Lord. Gospel Workers 254, continuing. Neglect the exercise of prayer or engage in prayer spasmodically now and then, as seems convenient, and you lose your hold on God. The spiritual faculties lose their vitality. The religious experience lacks health and vigor. So you see where we are. If our religious experience is lacking health and vigor, doesn't matter all the big talk we put on, all the criticism we do and so on, I need to pray, and you need to pray, and get right with God, and get into Christ. And if each of us does that, all the problems solved. Messages to young people, 96. Beware how you neglect secret prayer and a study of God's word. These are your weapons against them who is striving to hinder your progress heavenward. The first neglect of prayer and Bible study makes easier the second neglect. Young and old, are we praying and studying? And is our prayer life and study life improving? But we meet and criticize and talk about this and talk about the next and what should happen and what should happen. Are we praying and studying? Christ Object Lessons 250. Prayer brings Jesus to our side and gives to the fainting, perplexed soul new strength to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Prayer turns aside the attacks of Satan. But Jehoshaphat can tell you about that. A whole army that you couldn't count like the sand of the sea. And other world leaders will be looking for weapons, tanks, and atomic bombs. God told Jehoshaphat, the weapon you want is my love. And you want to set a choir to sing. And when the choir starts praising me, I inhabit the praises of my people. And when you start praising me and I come near to you, it's all over. Because when, I, when you have me and the enemy doesn't have me, Nobody has to trouble them. And when the choir starts singing, the enemy starts self-destructing. God doesn't have to kill anybody. They were separated from God. And every soldier saw his friend, where you are, what? Head off. Chain reaction. Prayer turns aside the attacks of Satan. So we can close now. You can see the diagram? This diagram, you know, you should know already, though, this is Camp Book 2000. We, are we going over the Camp Books and the, and the pre Precious Light that come? And there's a, in this area, there's a, a, a book you should read, Prayer, Preparation for the Latter Rain by Elder Oswald W. Newton, and the Power of God and the, and the Science of God's Word, Camp 2000, books on prayer and faith. Pick up these books and read them. 
At university, you're always revising. You're, this is the university of eternal life. You've got to be studying and revising and praying and studying and submitting. If you can see it, uh, we just go through it as it summarizes. It says, let me come a little nearer. You may get all you got come near. Ask. That's the first one there. Ask. Conditions for successful asking. Abide in Christ. Ask according to God's will. No selfish motive. A cleansed heart. And ask in faith. That's the column coming down. Praise the Lord. Belief. Characteristics of poor effective belief. A belief that is confident in God. A belief that wavers not. A belief that claims. Praise the Lord. And then claim. Claim it because it is given in the very promise. And we had all the texts and all the texts are there. You can find this again in the uh, book, camp, book 2000. And it will be again in this book coming up. If you have, and this is a sweet one. If you have enough faith to claim the crumbs, you will receive the bread. That's the story. We'll close with Matthew 15, 21 and 28. And then do. Do act upon the word. Give thanks. But Jesus told the lepers. Jesus told the lepers. Go and tell the, and show yourself to the high priest that you're cleansed. If the lepers stand up there saying, well, I, I ain't seen the evidence that I cleanse yet. Talking in Bajan. He would remain dirty. But they walked and came to the high priest. And by the time they got to the high priest, it was a fact that they were officially clean. I want to turn back and thank the Lord. Jesus asked where the other nine. So do act upon the word and do give thanks. Of Romans 4, be fully persuaded that what God has promised, he will perform. And the elementary principle number two at the bottom, think and act in harmony with the word of God. Closing text. And this closing text is the story. The woman came and asked Jesus for what would she, what she asked Jesus for? In this story, Matthew 15, 26, 29, the healing of her daughter. And what Jesus did, first of all, Jesus did nothing. He ignored her. Here the saints at Belize. Lord have mercy. Here the saints at Belize. Then what Jesus did next, call her dog. I come to the chosen people of Israel. I come to the dogs. Hear the saints. Woo! What kind of Christian Jesus could be? First he ignored me, then he called my dog. And then thirdly, Jesus said, it is not meat to take the children's bread, cast it to dogs. Listen to the woman. You see, it's how we take things. And if anybody says the worst thing to us and we take it right, a lot of problems will be solved. Listen to this woman. Listen to faith. The woman said, truth, Lord. Truth. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you, even as you will. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. With this kind of faith, all our problems will be solved. We won't be picking at what nobody body saying, picking at what nobody body doing, criticizing and grumbling. We get right with God and use this faith. I need that faith and you need it. And this kind of faith solves all problems. It is the faith that gets us ready for the mark of the beast and the loud cry. I think we should read it one more time, sing our closing hymn and then pray. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Awake, my soul. Stretch every nerve and press with vigor on. A heavenly race demands thy zeal and an immortal crown. Or closing him before closing prayer. As we climb Peter's ladder, this is the faith we need. And this is the faith of Jesus. 
He gives it to us, and we must cultivate it by prayer, by study of his word, by submission. This is genuine faith. He's paid the redemption price for every soul, but we can only be saved if we give ourselves to him. Praise the Lord. We thank God for a salvation which is complete and a salvation which is wonderful. So the, the, the cry comes to us, awake my soul. Stretch every nerve and press with vigor on. And this is done because it is God that works in us both to do and to will of his, both to will and to do of his perfect pleasure. A heavenly race demands thy zeal and an immortal crown. Brother Ruth. My soul, stretch every nerve and press with vigor on a heavenly rest demands thy zeal and an immortal crown. Jesus, all animate in voice that calls thee from on high. Tis he whose hand presents the prize to thine aspiring A cloud of witnesses around all of thee in full survey. Forget the steps already trod and onward urge thy way. Savior, introduced by the race have we begun and crowned with victory at thy feet we lay our trophies down. Oh, praise the Lord. Crowned with victory at his feet, we lay our trophies down. Let us not miss that glorious finale. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, you have taken us through this chapter, Faith Part 2, and we have seen even more clearly what victorious faith, the faith of Jesus, is. It is the faith we need, each of us as individuals, to be perfected for the final crisis. We thank you for your word. May we not just look at it intellectually, but understand it and experience it by believing and surrendering. Give us the victory which this faith brings and which is assured in Jesus Christ. And throughout the rest of this holy Sabbath, may Christ be uplifted, the faith of Jesus that justifies us. Have mercy upon us. Give us this faith and enable us to develop it and cause it to grow until it is fully matured, so that we keep the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments of God and are ready for the mark of the beast crisis. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.